Good evening and welcome to this edition of Arts Alive Film. I'm Tony Lindsay. And I'm Tony Lloyd. <laughs> Okay, high tech, hyper real, special effects, dystopian futures, class systems at war. It's all there. It's all there. We're obviously in the world of Neo Blokehoff. South African filmmaker. Yeah, born in Johannesburg. 1975, he's a youngster, 35, 36 years old. Alive, making all these films. What's yeah. going on? Of course, he, uh, he grows up in South Africa. At 16, he goes to school, the same school as Sholto Copley, who becomes something of a muse for him, doesn't and he? And himself a producer, actor, director. That's right. Sholto gives him uh, access to uh, a lot of computers. Um, Neil's passion here is for uh, computer effects, computer animation. Real hyper realist. Yeah, um, yeah, and animation. I think that this is this Fantastic. is where he, he makes his his first giant steps in the industry. But also, socially though, the backdrop of oh yeah, South course. Africa, apartheid obviously, South Africa. Remember? Yeah, this. absolutely. Yeah, so that's obviously making an impact. Yeah, he goes to Canada when he's eighteen. He uh, turns up in uh, the TV vineyards working on Dark Angel, Smallville. Uh, a I think he of, lives in Vancouver now. He does, yeah. yeah. Stargate SG One. Yeah. Um, so he's learning his trade, computer animation. He becomes a, a visual effects guy. He works for spy films. He creates a trilogy of films uh, known collectively as Landfall. Now, what these are are um, uh, sketches, aren't they? Sketches, but they're set in the Halo universe. Mm. Now, this attracts the attention of Peter U, uh, Peter Peter uh, Jackson. Uh, who um, gets together with him to produce the film of Halo? Uh, so Jackson with, was a real champion of oh, absolutely, of absolutely, a, a new talent. And yeah. they had Fox, 20th Century Fox, who behind oh, this. But yeah. then um, things went a bit sour, and uh, Blowcamp fell out with Fox, and the project died. But Jackson uh, As held, ever. held on there and got together with him to produce District 9. 2009's District 9. Um, a bit Stunner. of a st stunning debut. What a debut. Um, um, what do we say about this? Well, well, the, the main plot is we get um, aliens coming to her Earth and their mothership is hovering over Johannesburg. And when authorities go to see it, in, in, instead of this incredible super race they're expecting, you get this malnourished, frightened group of... Uh, Aliens, the which prawns. are then, yeah, which are then named prawns, and they're, they're housed on their own district, segregated, akin, akin to the townships. Yeah, it's it's, it's a play on on apartheid. Um, it's uh, it's about it's class, xenophobia. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but there's a thriller element in there. It's about uh, alien biotechnology weapons. The now the the lead yeah. Sholto. Yeah, Sholto turns up in that. Turns up in that. And the great thing about his character is um, as he becomes, shall we say, Alien. less human, Yeah, he becomes more human. And it's a touching story, Yeah, uh, really well realised, some genuine harrowing moments in Indeed. it. But the high tech and the tech is unbelievable. Which brings us on to four years later, we get Elysium. Oh, yeah, we've got the uh, full, got full, full budget, full so Hollywood we get Matt, Matt Damon, Jodie Foster in there. Again, a dystopian future. A Again, massive class system. Class system. He, he, he's established in District 9 this um, social realism. Hmm. Uh, this the a lot hand of handheld held, cameras, Verite style. Yeah, 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 yeah. mock documentary. And he, he follows this through with Elysium. Um, the... the Story's not as as well defined in this second one, is it? It's pretty straightforward, isn't it? Yeah, it's ravaged and polluted, and it's all the, the, the downtrodden um, rich and, and poor absolutely uh, are left on earth to scavenge what best, how best they can. Why off world you have this heaven? Mm. And true to place. form, the visual effects are superb. You know, it's all done in bright sunlight, but the, you can't see the join. Yeah, um, it's it's fabulous. So you've um, got this like elite class on Elysium. Yeah, and uh, Matt Damon has to go there, doesn't he? Yeah, to, to use to, some facilities there. Yeah, 
and trouble ensues That's from it. all of that. And but it, it didn't have the same. Um, no, no, absolutely not. District no, Nine. No, but then that brings us up to date with his uh, latest film, Chappie. 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 Um, much, much the same, really. Yeah, uh, a continuation of the. I mean, there was a dystopian South African vistas, etc., etc. I mean, there was a couple of shots there. The opening montage really sets the scene for this future place. Is uh, very similar to mm. set, um, District Nine for me. Mm. This one's more about artificial intelligence and yes. the introduction of consciousness. Uh, Chappie is a robotic policeman. Uh, he's always getting damaged, isn't always he? Always getting damaged. Yeah, and uh, he basically his his creator. Uh, wants to put a uh, a new um, program in him, which which replicates or becomes and is consciousness. Yeah, make him more human. But of course, things go awry. Um, the, the gangs get hold of him. Uh, a couple of uh, ne'er do wells. Um, and you've got Hugh Jackman in the background being a, an oh, ultra villain. He looks like a, he's a bit of a Disney villain, isn't he? Yeah, he's <laughs> over the top, pantomime. Yeah. Uh, we've got Charlotte Copy playing uh, Chappie. Um, I mean, what, what do we say about this? It's the same themes played over and over again, shot the same. A shot the same. I think that the thing that was the, the most strange was the tone of it. It's very mawkish and sentimental, mm. then it's ultra violent. It just doesn't sit well. It's, it's Robocop meets E.T. meets Short Circuit. I don't know if you Absol- remember Short Circuit from the 80s. Uh, five number alive. five is alive, yeah. yeah. I mean, it That's has it. the gentleness of that, but then the real sort of yeah. hyper-violence yeah. of Robocop. So where does he go from here? Alien 5? Well, well, he's been given the chance for Alien 5. I think people who are fans of, of him will not be too uh, happy with this. We'll have to wait and see, folks. we we'll see, wait and see. looking for a job. Okay, well now it's DVD time. And first up is Dan Gilroy's Nightcrawler. Yes, What do you think about that? I loved it. Superb neo-noir yep. thriller. Crime thriller, yeah. Uh, yeah. Starring Jake Willenhall. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> um, as a sociopathic... Uh, charmer. Charmer. Yeah. Um, he takes to uh, filming uh, news items, road accidents, yeah. uh, hold up shootings, etc. I mean, he's a crook, really, isn't he? He's he a crook. He starts off as a crook. He's, he's, um, he's not a nice guy. And he, he just happens to see someone doing some news footage and he realises he can get money yeah. Uh, yeah. that way. But I, what I loved about it is, uh, is change, it, it, the way he approached the character. Because he said that he starved himself. He said he saw this guy as a s- slinky, thin. And he really does look ghoulish, doesn't yeah. he? Yeah, he really does. It's a great performance. Why he wasn't uh, nominated, why the yeah. film wasn't in any of the Oscar categories. Well, I think it's a bite at, I think it's a bite at the media. And yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think it's definitely anything it like is. that. It is. It's, it's about how, how um, the industry kind of feeds on the news, uh, manipulates the news. Manipulates, yeah. Um, you know, anything that um, is violent, visceral, um, you know, and more, I'm, more. And I'm sure we'd say how unethical it was if we knew how the footage was obtained. But the thing is, we don't. We watch no. the news over our cups of tea. And yeah, food yeah, and indeed. The great thriller, it. though, folks. Yeah. Very well worth seeing. Which brings us on to Ouija. Our next uh, one. We, Ouija. Um, now this is um, have a play with one. directed by a guy called Styles White, a great name. <laughs> Styles White. Um, this falls into the, I think you agreed with me on this, the Final Destination camp. Absolutely, yeah. yeah it's it's yeah, Teenagers yeah. in Peril. They're, they're basically, they're great trying to... Great Saturday night film. Yeah, it? indeed. Uh, get, a, get some pizza and, and uh, settle down get around possessed. the TV. But yeah, it's they're trying to work out why their friend was killed and it turns out she'd um, been... Being involved with a, a, a possessed, and she's woken world. this force, which is after them all, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, What's so. curious about it is the that it was once a bought over the counter game. Yeah, it? indeed. And of course, the film is produced by Hasbro. Uh, Who they produced the, the game? The game. They produced Battleship. I think as old well. our boy William Friedkin put stop to all that. Indeed, in '73. Yeah. yeah. But Michael Bay produces here, and it's a low key affair for him, isn't it? Yeah. For, for him. But as I say, it's for your, your, your teenager Friday night crowd. Yeah, um, a lot of booze and big yeah. noises. And Absolutely. But worth a look if you're. Characterization's a bit two dimensional, but. 
you know, you get what you pay for. Anyway, that's it for part one. Coming up in part two, we've got an interview with Sarah Jane Honeywell. Lovely girl. Lovely girl. Actress. Lovely. Actress and presenter. See you after the break. See you after the break. Hello and welcome back to Odeon Liverpool One. Earlier this week we caught up with Sarah Jane Honeywell, actress. SJ to us. Actress, uh, chat show host. Have a look at this. First of all, SJ, thank you for coming in to see Very us today. So. Thank you. So, tell us something about yourself. Um, I suppose I'm best known for being on CBeebies, which is obviously kids' TV. Um, and yeah, I'm best known for shows like Higgledy House, which was a comedy mime show with Justin Fletcher, who, aka Mr. Tumble, who's a huge star now in the children's world, and Tickabilla, which was um, a kind of a kind of a an ode to play school so we had like the play school windows and the clock and and it was just general magazine show for kids preschool kids okay so this was 2003 to 2005 for tv work it was i mean it showed on air until about 2011 okay, but then i got so. taken off air for being naughty oh do you what tell? happened uh well first of all i ended up in a paper that we don't say around here um and uh the headline was see boobies and basically, um, I was pouring Diet Coke over myself in a vest top with no bra on a cold day. Enough said. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and the second thing... Same thing happened to him. I I've only tried so. it once. I thought so. I never well, did it again. Well, mine was Let's not talk about me. Again. <laughs> yeah, and then the second uh, thing was, um, before I did see BBs, um, I dabbled with some drugs. Um, hadn't done it for about four years when I got CBeebies, but then it all came out right. about two years ago that I'd done it, and so obviously I was then taken off air, even though I'd been clean and sober for 11 years, but... Okay, so this led to the film work? Well... well how did that impact upon you originally? Because obviously you're on this trajectory of you found your way into CBeebies and whatever, and you, you're happy, and, and then this comes along, so what did you... I mean, obviously you've gone on to greater, better things now, but how did it feel at the time? Uh, oh, well I felt bad about my parents, obviously, um, and it's a bit like your legs have been taken from underneath you. When a story comes out about you that, you've, that you don't know is going to come out, it, it, it's the weirdest thing. I never, you know, you see, it, you see it about other people, and I'm, you know, I'm not famous, I've got a small profile, some people know me, most people don't, um, so you don't think it's going to happen to you. And when it does happen, you just don't realise it's literally like someone's taking your legs from underneath you. However, I started out as an actress, so I'm quite a positive person, so I just thought, right, well, this is perfect. It's obviously the universe's way of telling me that I need to, that it's time to move on. So, okay, so you moved on <laughs> into, into the world of film. Yes. So tell us something about your first film. My first film was actually Shadows of a Stranger, and that was because um, the guy, Chris Clark, who uh, he was starring in it and he helped direct it, although it was written by uh, Rich Hutton, um, he loves kids' TV, he loves it. Um, and so he got in contact with me and just said, We've ri I've written a part for you in a film, you're an angel lady, will you do it? And I was like, amazing. Um, when I went to meet him, it was in Lincoln, and it was like on the it was like on the fens, and he said, "Come and meet us at like half past ten at night. It's in an old barn." And I thought, "I'm literally going to get murdered here. I'm I'm I've being been on dates like <laughs> or ended up in the leg of a wicker man." Yeah, I, don't know. I just thought, "What is this?" Um, got out there, and they had built a blue screen in a barn in Lincoln. Amazing, like on a curve and everything. We did rehearsals, the filming was amazing, and these guys have done all the animation for this film, and it's astonishing, it's really, really good. And I kind of play um, a girl that, you're not even quite sure whether she's real or not. Okay. I'm the twist. In most things I've done, I've been the twist. Okay. Yeah. I think that's a good thing to say. <laughs> that's my thing, I'm the twist. That's a nice legend to leave behind, the twist girl. Like <laughs> so, it. how was that received? Well, it took, it's taken him about three years because they've done all the animation themselves, but it's recently been shown uh, on Nottingham TV and um, it, I, we went to go and watch it at the cinema, which was an Odeon, um, and we went to go and watch it and um, basically, yeah, it was amazing. 
So obviously you've chosen a lot of genre work, like for horror. Um, why have you? Why, what, 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 what's the reason behind that? Well, at first, when I first did it all, I was like, oh gosh, I want to do it because obviously it's such a big leap away from kids TV that I thought this is perfect because it will really make people think about me in a different way rather than a slow progression. And I am an extremist, clearly. Um, so yeah, I just thought this is great. Um, surprisingly, it's kind of more fun and a bit more light hearted than kids TV. <laughs> <laughs> which is a bit, which which really surprised me because I thought people would be quite serious and quite dark and, but they're really not. You know, on on all the horrors and sci-fi's that I I've done, everyone's like hearted. They they love they love they work. I think generally people in horror do it because they love horror. So you're always with a great team. In 2013, you made Five Pillars. That was a social realist piece. Yes. Tell us a little something about that. It was a very small part in it, and I basically played George Newton's wife. Um, and just so that you know who George is, every, I think everybody knows who George is now. But he is is in he plays banjo in uh, This Is England, and he's also in Dead Man's Shoes. Um, George, I met him on on another film on Escar Trilogy, and he just said, "I want come on." I want you to come and do some work with me. I think you're great. So he basically got me the part of his wife. What I didn't realise until I got the script was it was him beating me up. Um, so I was a bit like, um, George. Um, but it was amazing. It was amazing to work with George. Um, he was so realistic. He, he basically, I had to hit him in which he said, really go for it. And I thought, I really don't want to because I've just heard, heard you doing the scene with the sun before and you've smashed a load of plates doing that. Um, but I did anyway, and he was terrifying. He had to pick me up and throw me across the room, and he did. He did exactly that, but he didn't hurt me um, at all. Didn't, even he had hold of my wrists at one point, and I thought I'm going to be bruised, and I wasn't bruised at all. But it was brilliant working with him because he didn't even. I didn't need to act. It was terrifying, but then it was really weird because we'd be, I'd be terrified and crying, and then well, we'd be larking about. The rehearsal process then was it, was it scripted or did you follow like an improvisation? There was a script routine? for that, but it was very much, very very quick camera rehearsal, and it was all kind of handheld, um, very fast paced. Um, did that help? I think it did, but I think really that George was so convincing, and. And I've got some experience of that type of lifestyle anyway. I kind of had a mean ex. Um, so I didn't have to dig very deep for that part, which is great. It was really great. Um, and yeah, I was like, when they were doing my makeup, I was actually shaking because I could hear him doing the fight with the sun in the scene before. And I was actually shaking, and like that probably comes from my past experience of that sort of thing. But it was great because it you know, it was all part of the moment. And then the minute we'd stop, we had so much fun in between takes, that was fine. In 2013, you also made The Best Years. Now, something very special happened on that film. Yes, it did. I met my fiance. Yeah, um, basically, I worked on that for two days. Um, and the first day that I worked on it, I had to kiss him. Uh, and he's seven years younger than me. And I remember <laughs> thinking, oh, I wonder who it is that I've got to kiss. Oh, God. And when I saw him, he's kind of quite fit and handsome and young. And I thought, oh no, he's gonna hate that he's got to kiss an old small woman. Um, anyway, uh, so I just made light of it and just was comedy. And, and then he kind of got my number and I thought, oh, how bless him. He wants to look after an old lady and make sure that she's all right on the shoe. And then he kind of stalked me for about, he told me so this, for about, I don't know, about two or three weeks. And then finally we went out for coffee. He was in New York and he was texting me every day. And I was still thinking, oh, you know, what a nice young man. He's being lovely to an old lady. And then he finally, we went out for coffee. And I thought, he's been really quiet. What's wrong with him? God, I'll do all the talking. Walk me to the station, said goodbye really awkwardly. And then I got on the train and then he texted me and said, I really wanted to kiss you then. And I was like that. Oh, I did not get that at all. <laughs> Did not see that coming. So a happy ending. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. Nice. Okay. Um, finally, where do you see your future? Where do you want to go? Uh, I, I just really want. I want to know more about the romance, but that's just. Me. <laughs> <laughs> I just really want to act. I really, I really want to prove to people that I can act because I think, um, 
I actually think my acting is better than my presenting. I kind of think people, they know that I can present, or they certainly know that I can go, ooh, what colour is this? It's red. Um, be nice if they knew that I could present in a grown-up way as well. But acting-wise, I think, I think that's my best, that's my best, part of my talent really and I think I've got a lot to show so I just like the chance to do that however that's quite difficult once you've been known as a kids tv presenter for anyone to accept that you can stretch that much even though obviously when you're presenting for kids that's not who you really are yeah in this country we don't like multitaskers do we no we love pigeonholing don't. don't we we do yeah we do do you have an agent I don't know okay. I don't so yes it's sort of agents <laughs> yeah SJ, it's been an absolute pleasure absolute. having you here today with us. Thank you for coming in. Thank, so Thank you so much, gentlemen. What a nice girl. Yeah. So that's about wraps it up for this edition of Arts Alive Film. What have we got for next week? Next week, we're, uh, well, actually this week, we're off to the Liverpool Liftoff Film Festival, which we will tell you all about next week. But until then, say Tom. goodbye, Tony. Goodbye, Tony. Goodbye, Tony.